Without any further ado, we'll get into our first speaker, Anthony Frieda. He's an award-winning political artist and activist, and his work has been published in Time Magazine, The New York Times, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, Adbusters, Liberation in France, and other international publications. His memes are, are the kind that, I mean, if you, if you have access to the internet, you've probably seen some of his work. And he's, uh, he's had viral hits on Infowars, Activist Post, Washington's blog, and he does a weekly political cartoon for Gerald Salente's Trends Journal and does a lot of other volunteer work. But his most uh, notable work recently is 9-11 Questions, which was originally commissioned by the Village Voice, now resides in the permanent collection of the National September 11th Memorial and Museum in New York City. Can you imagine that, getting in submersive message to there of all places? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Anthony Frieda. Thank you, Adam. My wife loves you. Uh, <laughs> so I make pictures. That's what I do. That's um, my contribution to the information war. And uh, you might be saying to yourself, pictures, eh, they're not that important. Pictures, you know, just a picture. Just a picture. But pictures are important. And you may have seen some of my pictures in some of these terrorist websites like InfoWars. They pop up all over the place. And uh, I try to use humor to expose the corruption of the elite and to, uh, to use these images as a way to expose hypocrisy and a way to uh, to use the archetypes, these ancient archetypes that have always been used in imagery. You have the, the hero and the villain. Hero and the villain. It's always been used throughout visual history by people who want to manufacture our consent, people who want to manipulate our tribal instinct, people who want to um, use their power to twist the historical narrative in a way and warp us into uh, going along with their program, whatever that program is. So I try to flip that on its head and um, kind of uh, throw it back at them in a Buddhist way. When somebody gives you hate, you give them love. And use the, the same techniques that are used to control us and conform us to inform people of the ways and the tricks of the, uh, the establishment. And um, these are the images I, I use. I, I, I'm, I'm always putting images out there on a variety of websites, a variety of uh, social media, and um, a variety of traditional media. I'm everywhere. And uh, I think that's the thing. You know, we, can, we have the power now, for the first time in history, to fight them on an almost equal basis. They're using images to control us and conform us. We can use images to fight back. We can use imagery. We can create memes, put them out there, and get them out to the masses. And we have this power, the first time in history that technology affords anybody the power to fight them on an almost equal basis, which is, is unprecedented. And it's, it's a sin if we don't take advantage of it. And it's all about exposing your hypocrisy here. You know, it's always about the villain and the hero. The villain and the hero. You know, Obama's saving us from this horrible menace. He personally went over there and saved us. And we should just bow in gratitude for saving us from the menace that's making us give up all our rights and making us have to wage endless war all over the world. But you still might say, you know, images, eh, pictures, they're not that important. Well, they're important to this guy. This guy uses pictures to try to start wars. I'm trying to use pictures to try to help expose the pretext and the lies that bring us into these wars and maybe prevent them. You know, if we educate people enough to these tricks, we, they can see them coming before they even get there. And we can hopefully use imagery to stop wars. This, this is a rare example of an image being used to, to stop a war. I mean, this, this image, so many people resonated with this image and, and it, it just drove home the idea that the war in Vietnam was completely immoral, completely insane, and there was no purpose other than um, enriching the military-industrial complex. 
and killed three and a half million people in Indochina for absolutely no reason. So there's a reason you don't see too many images like this these days. I mean, there's, pe there's little girls like this being killed all over in Pakistan and Afghanistan and Iraq. They're being burned to death by incendiary Hellfire missiles shot from Predator drones. Hellfire missiles burn people to death. Have you seen one picture of any of these little girls like this one? No. The reason you haven't seen it is because the establishment learned that images like this have power. They have power, so they hide them from you. You haven't seen one of them. And there's thousands of pictures. If you want to go online and see, you can find it, but you've got to search for it. You're not going to see it on the cover of Time magazine. So this is an example of images being used for good, to, to, uh, to make people aware of, of the real moral and actual consequences of these wars that we just abstract in our minds. It's not an abstraction. It's not an abstraction for this girl, and it's not an abstraction for the thousands of other little girls that are being killed right now with our tax money, in our name, in wars that are largely based on lies or fabricated pretexts or God knows what. I mean, they lie to us at every turn, so we have to constantly question what the establishment narrative it is because it's almost always a lie. I mean, they lied to us about the Gulf of Tonkin. They lied to us about WMDs. They lied about, they said nobody's spying on you. They lied to us about um, Jessica Lynch and Pat Tillman. You know, they, they have a pretty bad track record, so I think it just behooves us to always question it. And every time an image comes out, you can take one of their images and boomerang it back on them. This is a, a meme I created that kind of went viral, and uh, I know I'm racist to say that I'm against bombing hospitals, but I think that's bad. And uh, so do the Geneva Conventions and uh, international law. But, you know, I wish they didn't give me so much material, but they do. They like to uh, just, they make it my job too easy sometimes, and it's, I wish they didn't. There she is. Get ready to bow before her, because she might be our next loving leader, fearless leader, leading us into endless tyranny and warfare. And uh, certain people will bow and cry and weep, and I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so the best we could do is expose her war crimes, expose that she's been nothing but a, uh, a tool for the establishment, and endorsed every unconstitutional uh, attack upon our liberties for the last 20 years, everything from illegal spying to uh, she voted for the Iraq war, Iraq war, she voted for the Patriot Act. So yeah, if you, if you like those two things, then definitely vote for her. And this is, again, just pointing out their hypocrisy. That they hate when you point out their hypocrisy, and they harp on certain things, always for political purposes, obviously. And we can use these images and get this out. This, this thing's been seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And I put this out right after the uh, events of, uh, of a couple weeks ago in Oregon, because I hear people who are known war criminals blathering on about violence, and, you know, they have blood on their hands. I mean, the, I mean, the, the balls it takes to get up there and lecture somebody about violence when you are killing people. You know, you, don't like, you hate violence that much? How about you stop doing it? Maybe you should stop killing people and arming terrorists. Let's try that. So this is um, one of my most famous thought crimes, as Adam mentioned. This is in the uh, permanent collection of the 9-11 Museum. I sent them an email saying, you can't have a a 9-11 museum without representing the 9-11 troop movement in some way. And uh, to my amazement, they agree with me. So <laughs> we went through the process of having this piece uh, put into the museum. And uh, it basically lays out the case for 9-11 truth movement. They invited me there, and for an hour and a half, I was interviewed by the curators of the museum. And uh, it's a surreal experience when you're in the 9-11 museum making the case for 9-11 truth to the curators of the museum. And it was, um, it was bizarre, but they, 
they let me make the whole case calmly, and we have we made a film of it. Uh, Dry Masseria, the lovely, talented. Wait, go back. Go back. Wait, go back. <laughs> One more. There it is. We made a film behind Truth Art. The lovely and talented John Masseria, who's right there, made this film, and it uh, it documents this hour and a half interview, which is. Um, I think it's compelling, it's interesting, and uh, they gave me the opportunity to make this case, and um, it's probably unprecedented that somebody did something like that. Uh, it's one of the only pieces in the museum that questions the official narrative. So that's some way we can get you know, something inside the institutions and, and a chink in their armor, and we can use the power of, of the image to do that. This is uh, my take on a loving Big Pharma. This is uh, some of my buddies here, the lovely, <laughs> this lovely gang of war criminals. Um, you know, it looks like Satan's family posed for a family portrait. But uh, another thing when you're doing this kind of art, you need to punch up, you know. Every, every one of my targets is usually a war criminal. So all is fair in love and war crime as far as I'm concerned. Oh, this is, um, you know, <laughs> elephants and asses deceiving the masses. I, don't, I still don't understand why in a country of 320 million people, there's only two sanctioned opinions you can have. I guess most people in this room, our opinions lay outside of that. And I think that's a good thing because this partisanship, this tribal, it's just an extension of tribal loyalty and tribalism. And it's, um, it prevents any objective analysis of what's going on in the world. And you wind up speaking and talking points that were written by either uh, White House operatives or um, neocons. And uh, it's not productive, it's divide and conquer. And if we, if we can't rise above this intractable problem, then we've been, we've been played for fools. This is a loving mainstream media. They would never lie to you. They love you dearly. Uh, this is, <laughs> I mean, it's a weapon. It, Mainstream media is not meant to inform you, it's meant to conform you. This was a piece I did for my friend Gerald, Occupy Peace. He did a, um, a big um, rally upstate New York a couple weeks ago. A lot of people were there, Cindy Sheehan and Ralph Nader, and uh, it was a lot of fun. This is, uh, well, some pictures speak for themselves, so <laughs> I'll let that one speak for itself. And, and it's always about exposing their hypocrisy, exposing their lies, and, expose, and using the same you know, hero or villain archetypes to uh, expose these ideas. And there's another idea. If you don't think images are important, I mean, they banned the rebel flag. So they must think that's pretty important if they ban the thing. I mean, why? It's just, it's just a picture. Who is it going to hurt? It must, they must think it's going to hurt somebody because they banned it. So these images have power. They really are powerful. And we can create images that are powerful for our cause of liberty. We have this rich history of, of, of iconography that we can draw upon. And we can create images that uh, are compelling and you know, influence people's public opinion to our side. I mean, the, the Statue of Liberty is obviously is a cliched uh, image, but we can think of new and interesting and unexpected ways to use it, and I think that's the key. It's been used a million times, but this, it's still such a potent image that you can use it in ways that haven't been done before. There's another example. We have all these images at our disposal. Let's use them. Again, mainstream media is a weapon. Turn off the TV. Why are you going to let CNN tell you what's important? You have the whole world at your fingertips. If you have a phone, the whole world is right there. Why are you going to let them tell you what's important?
This is my friend Gerald came up with this word, the prostitutes. And uh, it's amazing because he invented a word. And it's in the Urban Dictionary. It's a word. And it's used all the time. And he invented it. It's a portmanteau of, obviously, press and prostitutes. And I think it explains a lot. And he asked me to illustrate it. So this is what I came up with. And just using the tools and the, using the formats that uh, popular culture affords us to you know, create parodies, it's obvious, but it's, um, it's an effective tool also. And exposing the tricks that they use. Once you understand these tricks and how they've been used against us, you can create images and icons and memes that uh, present these ideas to people in ways that are um, hopefully compelling. Apathy is our biggest problem. People don't care. They're lying about why they're sending your kids to die, okay? I mean, if that's not enough to get you to be pissed off, I don't know what is. You got to get mad. Apathy is just, it's, we're too late. It's beyond any, you know, time for apathy. We have to get pissed off and do something about it. I know you people are, and that's good, but most people just bitch about it and don't do a damn thing. And this, you know, it's this whole idea, this culture, listen, this, <laughs> this culture is not your friend, as someone once said, and uh, we need to fight it and we need to come up with alternatives to the culture to um, present ideas that uh, are not out there to destroy us, but ideas that can actually make mankind look towards the future and empower us instead of having us living in fear and, and division and hating each other. There he is. Fear is their greatest, fear is the greatest health of the, of the state. And if we can expose that and, and make people realize that whenever they come out with this fear mongering that it's either manufactured or it's exaggerated or it's just playing on our, our deepest instincts and trying to turn our, um, our personal private demons and nightmares into public enemies that they can attack. And it's Merck. And we can use icons, you know, icons of popular culture to tell these stories in, in ways that um, resonate with people. There's the original right there. My friend Nick Kiecki helped me make this thing, and uh, I think it's beautiful. That should be, I think we should knock down the old Statue of Liberty, which is some kind of Illuminati weird. I don't know what the hell that thing is. Put this thing up there. And this is the idea, you know, they always say they're fighting for freedom and democracy. I mean, please, does anybody really believe that anymore? It, it's, they, the reasons they take us to war are never the ones they present us to be. There are always some hidden reasons that we're never privy to because we're just some plebes that don't deserve the truth. There's a sheeple. It's about exposing, you know, always expose any trick you see. As soon as you see it, create a meme, put it out there, get people questioning or thinking about things in ways that are beyond the official narrative. I, I met Ralph Nader a couple weeks ago and he's at Occupy Peace and he has this uh, idea to, he's going to introduce a bill to um, require all of the children of congressmen who vote for a war to make their children uh, have to enlist when they vote to authorize a war. And he's, this is a serious thing, he's gonna do this. So I think it's great, send these guys over, make them think twice about it anyway. I mean listen, if, if these guys showed up at your house, would you be pissed off? Guess what, they're all there, in, they're in your house right now. Why aren't we pissed off? Just because they use technology to do it, why is it okay? If they showed up your house, you'd punch them in the face. 
This is the future, unless we do something about it. There he is. Be afraid. They have all the cars, but you know what? We have power too. The children are our future. I believe the children are our future. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Spreading freedom and democracy. This culture is not your friend. And we want to live in like a third world police state where cops have arms and they bring the weapons of war to our streets and treat us like we're terrorists. And I don't, listen, this is just, I, I want to paint a picture of the future that they want for us. I don't want this future. I want to put it out there so we can see where they're taking us, this road we're taking us down, so we can define a different future for us. We don't want this, this to be what we produce. These are the superstars of our age. This is the, te this is the when they put this on the news in heavy rotation, that's the two minutes of fear. The war on terror has no end. It's, it's a brilliant war from the perspective of the military industrial complex because there's no end to it. As long as one guy blows something up, there's still terror. Guess what? There's always going to be one guy who blows something up. So it's a war that never ends. There's no end. This is going to be a 100,000 year, year war. Unless we, we have to just figure out a way to enlighten people that the whole thing is a trick and a lie to, to, to just cause chaos and mayhem on a global scale. These, one of these two are going to save us. I don't know which one, but they both love you dearly. It's not like they're from rich establishment families and represent basically the same policies, the same wars. They both love the Iraq War. They both love the Patriot Act. It's continuity of agenda. They should just get married and have a child, and that person could run the country. That would be beautiful. School me, school you. This is the power of social media. We can fight back. We have a platform to do it now. We have to take advantage of it and do it. Uh, this is just a little tip. If you're going to create memes, or, uh, it's called Godwin's Law. Like, don't compare the person to Hitler, because once you went there, like, you went too far. And so you lost the argument because they're not Hitler, okay? They might be, you know, an asshole, but don't go too far. This is the loving technocrats. They know what's best for us. And yeah, what would Jesus do? He'd probably do something like this. And this, or maybe I do that. And this, you know, this is the idea of history repeats. You know, if we keep, they keep using the same tricks on us over and over again. What is it, how many times does it take for us to learn? We know they lied to us about all these other wars and all the, and throughout history. And then somehow we forget the next war, we just buy into it and believe the lie. We have to move beyond that. We have to raise our awareness and our consciousness to realize that they are discredited. They have no credibility. They are liars. They are manipulators. It's the politics of personality. We have the power to break our chains. You really want to be watched every, like you're like a criminal 24 hours a day? You want guys sticking their hands, your hands down their pants at the airport? I mean, we have the power, the Constitution gives us the power to take back all the rights that we're supposed to be afforded as American citizens. And we don't use it. We need to use these powers that we already have. We don't even need new power, it's already there. Let's just use it. And this is, like, like I say, I believe the children are our future. And <laughs> I wish I could sing, I would burst into song right now. But, uh, I'm worried he would escape a skateboard company to produce a line of liberty themed skateboards because I mean I got kids gonna be riding to school on this thing, you know? And it makes them think. And they they really are the future. So I, my son did this, he's eleven years old. He already knows what the military industrial complex is. 
He already knows when he's being lied to. He can see it before any adult sees it, okay? So if he can do it, we can do it. And, he, and he's already commenting, making a social political commentary, because uh, he's aware, he's awake. And I just want to end on a hopeful note. Like I say, we have the power. We can use imagery, we can create memes, put them out there, get them out so the whole world sees them. Fight fire with fire. And this is our opportunity, this is our historical destiny, and we need to do it. We need to take advantage of this opportunity and this power while we have it before they take it away from us. Thank you.